he's going to risk his life off England's southern shore in the most dangerous swim of his career. We are you know, completely redefining the Everest of swimming. best place which I can train because it's so damn rough. The water is swirling underneath you. It's it's scary. My most difficult swim by a long way was swimming the full length of the English Channel. I mean nobody had ever swum 528 kilometers before. It's, it's a monumental distance. I saw a photograph the other day from the International Space Station of the English Channel and even from the International Space Station it looked a bloody long way. Okay, so it took me 49 days to swim the full length of the English Channel. And what so surprised me about the swim was just how little wildlife we saw. I mean, we saw a few birds, we saw a few fish, a few dolphins in Lion Bay, one turtle, and very little else. And throughout the whole swim, we just, every single beach we went to where we did beach cleanups, we just saw plastic pollution everywhere. And it's like we have hoovered up the fish and thrown in the plastic. My purpose is very, very simple. It's to be a voice for the oceans. It's to be a voice for the polar bears. It's to be a voice for the penguins. It's also to be a voice for the children. It's to be a voice for the children of the world. Uh, it seems to me that uh, we stand at a very, very important moment now in the history of the world and the voices of the children, they need to be heard and acted upon. You know, so it's, it's really, really important work this, you know, not just do our children and our grandchildren rely on it, but we do. You know, our oceans sustain us. They give us oxygen. They give us food. They sustain life on Earth. There is no life without health in our oceans. Hi, my name's Lewis Pugh. I'm the United Nations patron of the oceans. I've committed now to trying to get the world to fully protect 30% of our oceans by 2030. I've never ever in 30 years of campaigning ever been given a large donation, ever. You know, the 500,000 rand which Stan Bank gave me, it's never happened before and it's never happened since. And it was so emotional that evening when, when Ben made the announcement and, and Sim was sitting next to me that I turned to him and I just gave him this enormous kiss. I, I, <laughs> I felt dreadfully embarrassed afterwards, but it, it came from, from this this place in my heart where I've been fighting now for 30 years to try to protect the oceans. When somebody comes along and gives you 500,000 rand, which you know that you can do an awful lot with, it's, it's an emotional moment. I, rem I remember sitting in Westminster Abbey, and it's such an incredible building. You know, this is where the kings and queens of England have been crowned for nearly a thousand years. I'm sitting opposite the queen and thinking to myself, well, how on earth did I get here? This is an amazing moment, and you know, when I thought back about it, it actually started with Standard Bank. You know, bizarrely enough, it started with Standard Bank. I did a speech uh, for the children of investors at Standard Bank uh, for Ed. After that, then Margaret asked me to give a speech to the group. After that, I was asked to give a speech at the Perfect Swing, where you generously gave uh, 500,000 rand. From that, I then uh, went to England and I met a man called John Riley. John Riley was the CEO of Sky News. I threw out a map and I said to him, John, I want to swim the full length of the English Channel from Land's End all the way through to Dover. He said, we're going to give you live coverage on a daily basis, every single day. We felt that the United Kingdom was the right country in which to do the campaigning uh, because all the other countries were so busy with all their various issues. And so I decided to swim the full length of the English Channel. So this is a swim from Penzance all the way through to Dover, 528 kilometers. It took me 49 days to complete, but it was an unbelievable campaign. Every single day we had live coverage of the swim and the campaign to protect the waters around the United Kingdom. But following on from that, the Queen then asked me to come to Westminster Abbey and to give a speech to the Commonwealth. It was the 70th anniversary this year of the founding of the Commonwealth. And she said, would you please come along and give a speech about protecting the oceans? And I couldn't help but be sitting there 
in front of Her Majesty the Queen, the Royal Family, 53 High Commissioners. There are 1,500 people in this old ancient abbey. And all I could think about was, oh, just try and join the dots all the way back. How did this actually happen? And I've got to be honest, it actually started at Standard Bank. As a result of this, we've been able to protect nearly 2 million square kilometers of vulnerable ocean around the United Kingdom and around various parts of the, of the old British Empire, so places like South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands and the Ascension Island. Now, 2 million square kilometers is the size of Western Europe. It's the biggest conservation plan that has ever been rolled out. There were just so many jellyfish during the swim. And you know, a jellyfish never ever stings you, you know, on your back or on your leg. It's always straight in the face, or down the stomach, or in the groin, always. And I swam across one bay called Lion Bay, and that swim took me about 10 days of the 48 days. And throughout that swim, it was just jellyfish in the face, jellyfish in the stomach, and jellyfish in the groin for 10 days. At the end of it, I was, I was glad to see the end of, that, of those jellyfish. So I'm now about to embark on a campaign across the whole of the Commonwealth. So from India to Canada to Australia to New Zealand to, to, to Tuvalu, South Africa, all the way around the Commonwealth, urging them to fully protect 30% of their oceans. And I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. I mean, we've been successful in getting 2 million, 2.2 million square kilometers fully protected. Now we want to take that model and we want to roll it out across the Commonwealth. People look at swimming and they think it's a, you know, a solo sport. There can be nothing further from the truth. When I do these big campaigns, there's a massive team around me supporting me. Uh, so when I swam the, the length of the English Channel, the whole team behind me was nearly 30 people. It was a lot of people. You know. But that's what's required if you're going to be able to do a you know, very long swim and do all the media and get all the media attention. You need a, you need a big team and you also need uh, people protecting you. Sometimes during that swim along the English Channel, we went through some of the most difficult swimming conditions I, I, I've ever been through out in my whole life. You know, if you swim across the English Channel, so you swim from Dover to Calais, that's only 32 kilometers. You can wait for the right day. But if you're going to swim the full length, you're going to have to swim every single day. And I didn't know whether this swim was going to be possible. I really didn't. I mean, I said to John Riley, the CEO of Sky News, yes, I'll do it. But back in my heart, I, I didn't know whether it was possible. No human had ever done it. But I made three promises to my team. I said the first promise was that we were going to leave all our doubts on the beach in Land's End. Because if we had doubts, then we'd just never get far. Okay? The second thing I said to them was that every single day was going to be a swimming day. And the third promise I made to them was that if the yacht couldn't go out, so we actually couldn't go out and swim, it would be too dangerous, the next day would be... 20 kilometers and if we had two bad days then the next day would be 30 kilometers and that was actually the only way we got through all the way through to the end it was about putting our doubts behind us setting those goals every single day and being absolutely adamant that we are going one place and that is Dover with one mission and that's to get the British government to properly protect its waters and the waters around all its overseas territories, especially those magnificent ones down in the South Atlantic. Scientists are urging us to fully protect at least 30% of our oceans by 2030. Currently, we have protected less than 7%. It's the moments which challenge us the most that define us. We stand at a crucial moment in the history of our planet, so we must dive in together and without reservation in order to protect our oceans. Let this be the Commonwealth's gift to the world.